In this example, we're going to talk about a new capability, which is called nesting, which is a capability that's now built into Composer. Nesting is a function where you take your original objects and they get placed together to try to minimize the amount of space required to output that particular job. So we'll have an example here with a hockey stick. I'm just going to select this hockey stick and go into Repeats Merge and set up a bunch of repeats. So right now I have 10 hockey sticks. What I can do now is go into the Tools menu, and then you now notice that we have a new nesting option, nesting. And when you go into the nesting dialog box, there are a bunch of parameters in here you can choose. To start off with, I'm just going to use the defaults. Then I'll explain a little bit about what the different settings are. So I'm going to go ahead and go to OK. And the way I have it set up as the defaults is that it's going to either try to get this number iterations up to 500 or the time up to one minute. So I'm going to get to 500 first, and it beeps at me, and I say to myself, well, where are my nested results? Well, I'm just going to hit spacebar, and what it does is that it puts it at a 0, 0 coordinate in the same composer session. So your originals are left untouched, and the new results are put at a 0, 0 coordinate, and if I'm going to go to the View menu and then show my layer manager, it also puts the new results on a new layer, which is called nesting or nesting 2 or nesting 3, depending on how many times you do the nesting. So that means that your originals are left untouched and your nested results are put on their own layer at, as a nested version. So to compare my original results to my nested results, I'll go ahead and select those and I'm going to go, in, go into absolute size or control I on my keyboard. You notice that my originals are 235 square inches, this number down here. Now I'll do an F4 to reverse select and go control I for absolute size again. And now you notice it's 142 inches. So just using the defaults, I already have a substantial reduction in the amount of space required to do this job. So it's 142 versus F4, control I, 235. So it reduced it by almost 100 square inches. Now we'll explore some of the different settings that are available in this new nesting capability in Composer. I'll just select my objects once again, then go into Tools and Nesting. And I'll just work my way down through this nesting dialog box. The first thing we encounter is this height and length. And you notice that the height is set to be 11.8 inches and the length is set to be zero. If you have one of your values set to be something, for example, 11.8 inches, and for Gerber edge owners, that'll be a familiar value because that's the maximum print size of an edge. So right now, I'm going to attempt to nest it into a height of 11.8 inches and a length of zero. And what that zero means is that it's going to try to pack in your nested objects as tightly as possible in the length by setting that to zero. You can also reverse this and you can uh, type in a length value, say, of 35 inches or 36 inches and make a height value of zero. And what it'll try to do is to pack it into a length that's uh, 36 inches long and a height it's going to try to pack it down as tightly as possible, like packing down snow. So those are two uh, quick and easy settings just trying to make your life a little bit easier. My default that I tend to use the most is 11.8 and a length of zero because I just want it to be as efficient as possible in the length. You can also click on let nesting determine size and what that will do is try to pack it into a square based upon the size of your original objects. And it's just kind of an estimate of the height and length um, and whether or not you can fit it into a square of that size. So that's just another option as well. Uh, so I'm going to turn that off, change this back to be 11.8, uh, 11 and change this back to be 0. That's my favorite setting. Spacing is a very important setting as well because uh, you can reduce the spacing between your nested results and that can make you more efficient. However, as you become uh, more efficient in your spacing, it might take a little bit more time. But I'm going to change my spacing from 0.1 inch down to 0.01 inches. And just as a comparison, you'll recall the last time when I did nesting using spacing of 0.1 inch, uh, the nested results were packed into about 142 inches. So now I've changed it to 0.01 inches, and I'll go ahead and tell it to nest those using the new spacing value. 
and this iterations number is just going to get to 500. And then I'll hit spacebar and select my nested results and then go control I for absolute size. And now you see instead of 142 inches, it's now 112 inches. So simply by changing that spacing value, uh, I was able to reduce the area even further. Let me undo that once again and select all F2 and go into tools and then nesting once again. Next, we have uh, nest by groups or outermost contours. These two settings uh, just allow you to control how your nested results uh, get oriented. So for example, with uh, in this case, I'm using outermost contours. This is a Gerber edge job where I have a contour cut on the outside and all my print objects on the inside. So I have one outside shape for each of my hockey sticks that is determining um, my outermost contour. So I want to use that in this case. Alternatively, so another case where you would use outermost contours might be for a line of text. Text is grouped on a line by line basis. However, if I use outermost contours, it's going to look at the outside shape of an A and maintain the inside and the outside shapes uh, in my finished nested results. So Gerber edge jobs with a contour cut, text, that's a good time to use outermost contours. If I have a series of logos that I've imported into Composer and each one of those logos is grouped, then I can also choose to nest by groups. So I'll use outermost contours for this job because I'm not sure if my hockey sticks are grouped. From your part layout specification, you have grid and you have angle. And I'm going to talk more about angle than I am about grid. For grid, the smaller you make it, the, the more tightly packed, once again, your objects will be. The smallest value is 0.01 inches, and I already have that set here. In terms of angle, it would seem intuitively that the smaller the angle, the more opportunities you would have to nest your objects tightly together. However, what I've found is that by using an angle of 90, I'm able to get some uh, very tightly nested results without having to have to wait very long. The smaller you make that angle, the more time it requires the nesting program to go ahead and iterate through all the different variations. So it has to take each object uh, and compare it to each other object at a series of, you know, between uh, 1 and 180 degrees, for example, if I set this angle to be 1 degree. So I've found that an angle of 90 degrees gives good, fast results and gives you very substantial and dramatic reductions, in some cases even better than using a value of 1. So intuitively, you might want to use 1, but experientially, I've found that 90 is actually a very good value. Allow shape flipping uh, does just what it sounds like. It will allow your objects to be flipped in the nested results. However, I've found that in uh, many cases, such as with text or with a label or a decal or a logo, you can't actually uh, sh uh, flip your shapes because um, it's going to make it read backwards. So I tend to leave that off. Down here, place stats or statistics on the clipboard and layer notes. What that's going to do is just place some nesting statistics onto the Windows clipboard so you can paste it into Notepad or what have you. And it will also place it on your layer notes. So I'll go ahead and turn that on. Uh, so we can see what, what uh, that does in a moment here. And finally, you have your nesting duration limits. Again, uh, I tend to keep these settings a little bit on the low side. So my maximum iterations are 500, and my maximum time is one minute. Uh, however, in conjunction with an angle of 90 degrees, as you see up here, that gives me some uh, very substantially reduced nested results uh, in a, you know, a very... Uh, non-painful amount of time. <laughs> so for this, I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, and one other guy we have over here is copies. If I only had a single hockey stick and hockey puck, I could tell it that I wanted, say, 10 copies or 15 copies or what have you. Uh, I can also set my copies here to be two, and instead of having 10 of my original hockey sticks, then it would multiply it by two, so I would actually have 20 hockey sticks nested together. So I'll set my copies to be two just for just for fun. Uh, I'm going to place my statistics on the clipboard. Uh, I'm going to set my grid to be 0.01. And uh, one other thing I'd like to mention about angle. If I set my angle to be 0 degrees, it's not going to rotate my original objects at all. So if you have something that's sensitive to being rotated for whatever reason, um, then uh, you can set your angle to be 0, and it's going to nest them together. So I'll do two more examples. I'll do one example where my copies is set to 1, and I'm going to set my angle to be 0. Go 
ahead and do OK. So this is not going to rotate my hockey sticks in any way, shape, or form. It's just going to move them horizontally and vertically to try to save as much space as possible. So we'll just wait for this number to get to 500. One moment, please. Hit space bar. And now, let's see, control I. And it brought it to 158, uh, 158 square inches. So it went from uh, 240. Uh, 235 down to 158 square inches without rotating my results in any way, shape, or form. So that's a, you know, if, again, if you're rotation sensitive, you can set that to be zero and you can um, have your objects not rotate. By the way, if you do have linear or gradient fills in your original objects, um, all of your linear and gradient fills, any images, small text, things like that, the relationship of the linear and gradient fills to the, uh, to the other objects in each one of your nested originals is maintained. So you can rotate an, a Gerber Edge decal or Gerber Edge text uh, and you can not worry about your linear or gradient fills uh, being disturbed in the nested results. So now I have my original object selected. I'm just going to do one more example here, tools and then nesting. And then this time I'm going to set my spacing to be 0.01 and I'm going to set my number of copies to be 2 and I'm going to tell it to place my statistics on the clipboard and on my layer notes. And I'm still keeping my iterations in time at 501 minute. So now I'm going to have 20 hockey sticks. And they will be rotated using the 90 degrees. And I'll have my statistics available to me. So here are my results. There are 20 copies. And let's see, control I, and this is telling me it's 215 square inches. So even though I have twice as many hockey sticks as in my original, I do have four, it still is taking up less space. So that's pretty good, very efficient. Uh, again, and if I go to my layer manager, so I'll go to the view menu and then show layer manager, and then I click on my nesting layer it shows those statistics to which I was referring before. So the process time, 31 seconds, total shapes processed, etc. And also the area of the shapes, it's saying that my nested results are 75.4% of my original objects. So I have a 25% reduction, but don't forget, in this case, I have twice as many hockey sticks in less space. Here's another example of some nesting that I'll show just doing some basic text. So I have three lines of text. It says text nesting. I'll go into tools and then go into nesting. And this time let's say I'm going to cut this on a friction plotter. So I'll set my height to be uh, 22 inches and set my length to be zero. And I'm also going to reduce my spacing down to be 0 0.01 inches. And I'll leave everything else the same. Again, because this is text, I'm going to nest by my outermost contours so my inside shapes stay true to the outside shapes. Click on OK, and then we'll take a quick look. I'll hit space bar so we can see my results. My original text is 230 square inches. My nested text is 129 square inches. So again, a reduction of about 100 square inches in this case as well. It just took a matter of moments. So there is a summary of the composer nesting capability allowing you to nest objects to reduce output space.